What if we could test new drugs without human and animal trials? At the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, researchers have developed what is being called the body on a chip, a device roughly the size of a paperback book that may do just that. Hari Srinivasan recently spoke with MIT professor Linda Griffith, who is leading the team developing this new technology. She joined him via Skype from Cambridge, Massachusetts. First, explain how it would work. So if you want to study a disease, for example, if the disease is affecting three organs in the body, you would build a model of that and then build an experiment that represents that using human cells and, and uh, components. So these are on a cellular level mimicking what a particular organ that I would have w does? Actually, even better than that, because we build a little model of that organ, or at least parts of that organ. So your organs have billions and billions of cells. We combine many different kinds of cells from each organ together in a 3D model. Then we connect them together so they talk to each other like they would in the body. This is really important for things like arthritis, Alzheimer's, where you've got multiple organs involved. You need them to be a model in vitro that's human talking to each other. When a new drug is introduced, you can study how it might affect my liver and my pancreas and my bladder at the same time. Absolutely. We, we're right now doing gut, liver, pancreas and gut, liver, brain, but you got the idea. And part of it is not just to say, how will the drug affect this, but we can even say, you know, what should the drug even be? Because right now, the hardest thing is to figure out what kind of drug will be good for treating a complicated disease. How do you account for how human bodies have immune systems built in? I mean, it seems like our own bodies sometimes reject or accept drugs based on how we're built. Yes, almost every disease that we have a difficult time solving involves the immune system, and that's so different in humans than in mice. So our system actually has part of the immune system. It has some of the liver's innate immune system, the gut innate immune system. Other parts have to be trained, and this is much harder to do. We have a project with a pharmaceutical company where we're doing exactly that. And this is very early stage, but this is gonna happen in the future, this is where the whole field is going, to incorporate the immune system so we can study these really complicated diseases, including cancer, Alzheimer's, and so on, that involve the immune system. Does this help bring about that idea of personalized medicine in the future? I mean, could I essentially run almost a clinical trial based on my own organs and my own body and see if this drug is right for me versus you? Sort of, maybe. The cost would have to come down to have it be that personal. But think about it. I study a disease called endometriosis. About 10% of women have this. We published the first paper doing a molecular classification into a few groups of patients. So you can imagine maybe there's 10 groups of patients, and now you'll figure out how to make a drug for each of those 10 groups. And then we'll figure out how do we test you so that we can see which group you fall in. Then you can take the right drug without us having to build you, because building you is a very personal thing. And is there an acceleration in this field like there is in computers, meaning does it get cheaper over time and faster over time? We would expect the analogy to hold. You can imagine it's kind of like building an iPhone. And to make the iPhone work, you had to invent the phonograph and then the cassette tape player. You had to invent television. You had to invent computers. So a lot of things came together. This is very similar. There have to be huge advances in biology, material science, and actually in engineering, because we need engineers who think about how do we model the human body? How do we think about information flow and design these systems? You've got to be able to design them before you build them. So how soon until this is out in the wild, so to speak? <laughs> Some parts are going out in the wild, if you count like Amgen or other people we work with the wild. Um, it's going, again, to be sort of like the cell phone because the individual elements that are needed to make it happen are all moving quickly in parallel and starting to come together. Right. Linda Griffith of MIT, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.